Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. I am the Kitchen Witch, and today is Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. And we're here today to bring you some astrology, numerology, and fun things to help keep your day going smoothly and far more uh, positive. Positive. <laughs> this isn't uh, my usual shtick, but I'm giving Lysander an extra moment to get ready this morning. <laughs> so hello everybody. Almost there? Almost. Almost there. How is everyone this beautiful day? Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm going. Just so you're still gonna hear me in the background, yeah. <laughs> I'm still here. There's the star of the show. Oh hello. Hello and good morning everyone and welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. I'm sure you've already been welcomed, but hello anyway. <laughs> um, my name is Lysander Xanthus and I will be sharing with you uh, various spiritual information that hopefully you can make use of in your day ahead. Um, so... I like to start each morning with a little energy clearing and a blessing. I will be using this selenite crystal to send you healing and peaceful energy. I bless you and I bless your day ahead. I bless you that you find clarity today bless your day ahead that it be full of good experiences and good company. May your path be clear. Be blessed. I would like to share with you the astrology for today. Well, let's see. So we have the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn. Um, so we are continually encouraged to become the leaders of our own lives. Um, when we can take responsibility for our choices and for the direction of our life, new opportunities will open to us as well as a, uh, engaging those qualities in ourselves will allow us to be transformed as well as our circumstances. Um, so now is a good time to get yourself organized and think about where you'd like to go in your year 
Uh, it's up to you to make the changes and put yourself in a new direction. Uh, this is definitely not a time to hope on other people or this situation changing on its own. Mars is in Sagittarius, so uh, we are open to what is possible for us. Um, our sense of initiative is especially geared towards kind of expanding our sense of possibility. Venus is in Aquarius, so we may be feeling more independent in our relationships and love life. More inclined towards community rather than one-on-one -on -one relationships, and we may be seeking new and different ways in which to be with others. Neptune is in Pisces, um, so we are more connected to our emotions and psychic impressions at this time. Um, our deeper knowledge is rising to the surface. Uranus is in Taurus in retrograde. Um, so we are reassessing uh, not only our comfort zones and our habits, but any changes we have made or are considering making at this time. Um, Uranus will be going direct on Friday. The moon is waxing in Gemini. Yes, just staring at my camera. Okay, uh, in Gemini. Uh, here it, on screen it appears on the line, but it is in Gemini at this point. Um, so we may be feeling especially social um, or mentally inclined, looking outwards. Uh, rather than looking within ourselves, we are looking out at the people around us and the situation we are in. Um, and we probably have a greater need just for fun at this time. Sometimes fun is something that we can neglect. So if you're feeling that way, be mindful of it and maybe do something just for you that you enjoy today. All right, and that is the astrology for today. Um, some notes here, but I think I'll bring them up here. So next is the numerology. Today is a seven day. A seven vibration seeks the truth and is always asking the big question, who am I? This is a seven day. You should take time out today to study, learn, and seek the truth. Spend time on your own. Get with nature, the oceans, mountains, etc. If you are usually a big communicator, stay quiet and just observe. On the other hand, if you are normally quiet, this is the day to speak your mind. If you are troubled by a problem in your life, light a white candle, shut your eyes, and ask your inner voice what you should do. The answer will come to you. It's a good day to connect not only with nature, but your own spiritual foundation. All right, so we will be moving into our crystal healing for the day. especially good today. I'm not sure why. Today's crystal is Tiger's Eye. This was once a massage wand, but a certain cat knocked it off the shelf and broke it. But it's still a lovely and viable piece of Tiger's Eye. 
I like to stand it up on its end. It looks very much like a like a little tombstone. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so uh, this is what we're going to be working with today. Some of the properties of Tiger's Eye are uh, grounding, protection, um, bringing in the energy of joy into one's energy, and uh, confidence. Especially gold tiger's eye. Gold tiger's eye is hugely abundant in confidence and um, self-esteem boosting. Yes, I was going to ask you to tell us a little bit about it since this is your favorite crystal. Yes, it was this cat that done it. exceptionally grounding because it has hematite in it. The silver That's what the bands are. Bands are all hematites. You have the properties of hematite, which is fantastic. Uh, tiger's eye is a type of chalcedony, which means that it's actually got roots in quartz crystal, which means that it has the effects of clearing and purifying as well, which makes tiger's eye an exceptional grounding stone. And uh, gold tiger's eye is especially good for building confidence and self-esteem. Um, and it was actually worn by kings and princes in ancient times, which is pretty cool. Interesting. It just seems like such a humble stone in the modern age. It really is. But it's actually incredibly difficult to mine because like hematite, it's hard as nails, so it's actually very difficult to mine, and it was very difficult to shape, so it was considered very, very valuable. Softer stones were actually considered to have less value because they were very easy to pull out of the mine and shape. So the harder the stone was to shape, the more value it had, which is why a lot of uh, ancient uh, pharaohs and things like that were covered in stuff like lapis which is a lot harder to find and a lot harder to shape as well. Indeed. Uh, the, the, history. the history of what was considered valuable is very interesting. Sometime you should Google the tulip, Tudor tulip rage. Okay. <laughs> Let's not get off topic though. <laughs> All right. So it, you are going to experience the, crisp, the energy of this crystal for yourself. So if you would like to um, participate, sit, relax, and allow yourself to receive the energy of this crystal. drawn to the head with this crystal, so I'm going to gently massage the forehead and temples, beginning with the third eye, which we normally associate to intuition, but does also represent your qualities of intellect and the mental aspect of your energy.
sides and down the back. area of the arm. Now going down the body, down to the ground. Drawing the energy of the earth up through the body and back down, bringing stability, safety, and nurturing. something off on the right edge of the aura. So if there's something external bothering some of you, a person or something in the environment, protection around you using the energy of this crystal. Now we'll take a moment to focus on the abdomen, the sacral and solar plexus chakra rest. the chest, working on that quality of confidence and inner security. Feel a tight anxiousness in someone's chest. Sometimes it can actually be very hard to be confident. Don't worry, the energy can reach you through the cat. She's lending her cat accent to the energy. She is a nurturer, drawing the, stimulating the lower chakras and drawing up that confidence through you. It can be hard to be confident because it means trusting, it means investing yourself and your heart into the 
into whatever it is your your goal is or what you believe in. So sometimes if we're not confident, we we block ourselves from being it because it can feel too hard, too exposing, too vulnerable. We don't want to fail again or let ourselves down again. It can be very painful. It is safe to try. It is safe to have confidence in yourself and it is safe to believe. It is safe to hope. Even if you do fail or you don't accomplish what you set out to do, trying does matter. And just because it didn't happen this one time doesn't mean that that will always be the case. Be open and don't assume that this is the end or a defining moment. The sun always rises tomorrow. I draw sun energy up as well from your feet and up. Let your light shine outward. Let your energy push outward. You have a right to take up space, to occupy, to occupy the space that you naturally take up. And when you allow yourself to take up your own space, it's a lot harder for other things to intrude upon you. time on the third eye. Which also rules the mind, not just psychic ability. Clearing the mind of old ideas. This concludes the crystal healing with Tiger's Eye. Yes? All right. Let's go to Cat Cam for a moment. Go. spot on. So please sit in the healing energy you've just received and enjoy observing a cat. Hashtag more cats. This is Arush Gagal, the healer. She's a gifted empath whose loving heart heals. She is the most loving cat. I might be biased, though. <laughs> uh, people say hello, darling. Mm. I just thought we could use some cat vibes after that wonderful healing you gave us. Yes. Cats have a wonderful energy. She is so peaceful. She really loves sitting on my desk. 
wasn't sitting here for the first part of the stream, so she was getting mad at me. All right, well, what's next? Well, next we are going to be moving into our, our affirmation for today. I'm sure everyone can sit here and watch the beautiful lady sleep for days and days, but let's go ahead and move into our affirmation. I mean, she could have her own stream sometime. Um, we, should. we should. Hours of her napping. We should just have a restaurant. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sandy says you're very sweet, little cat. All right. No, I'm enjoying watching her too. <laughs> All right, we are going to move into the affirmation. I have switched the camera. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say this affirmation to you the first few times because I would really like you to listen to the words and be able to take them in without having to focus on saying them at first. So I will say them to you in first person and then second person. Uh, also welcome Lisa, first time viewer. Uh, this affirmation comes from the book Heal Your Body by Louise Hay and this affirmation is for loss of appetite even if this is not a specific issue that you deal with, I feel it is still a helpful affirmation for all. <sighs> I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. You love and approve of yourself. You are safe. Life is safe and joyous. You love and approve of yourself. You are safe. Life is safe and joyous. Now, we are going to say this together three times. I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. Sit with those words. These are very powerful affirmations, especially since this one consists of some very basic foundational blocks. Everyone can benefit from the affirmations, I approve of myself, I love myself, and I am safe. And I'm sure that, though simple these are, they are very challenging ones, and that a lot of resistance can come up for you when saying them. I am safe is such a hard thing to truly grasp. We live in such a seemingly violent world, having the the strength to say, I am safe, and to truly believe that is 
very difficult. I know I struggle with it exceptionally. It is part of the hard work of affirmations and working with the law of attraction and doing manifestation work is when you have had so much evidence proving all of your negative beliefs true mm -hmm. and having to have faith that switching your mindset and what you acknowledge really can make that difference and eliminate those things and it does sound like a tall order but it is true it does change things you can choose to live in a safe world yeah as extravagant a claim as that might sound. <laughs> I think it's just very difficult to believe, but it the is. reality is that, you know, it starts with you. If you believe that the world is dangerous, then you're only going to see the danger in it. So, it's a, it's a very powerful thing. I am safe. Mm-hmm. All right, that concludes today's affirmation. Uh, thank you all for the feedback and comments. Love hearing about people's journeys. Uh, good for you, Sandy, on your personal work. And welcome to the new viewers. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Ray. Good morning. Yes, Eliza is manning the uh, watch party today, so I'm not observing those comments. Yes, so far <laughs> it's just been some good mornings from our, our lovely viewers. Oh good. So, um, I this is where I will be inserting the magic slash spiritual tips of the day segment. Magic tip of the day. Normally, this is where a card re reading would be, but that will be after the tips segment from now on. So, um, today is Tuesday the 7th. Look at my notes in the planner here. <laughs> um, so, the tip, the uh, magic tip I have for you today is uh, concerns astrology. If you take the time to study your astrological birth chart, eventually you'll you can you will find that you understand it enough that you are able to correspond um, your magical practice to astrological events in a way that is very relevant to you individually and your star makeup, if you will. Um, I've noticed this for myself because there's been a lot of movement with the moon through Cancer and Capricorn. Uh, my north node is in Capricorn. So the kind of energy uh, that has been happening with the moon phases and those signs and the way the planets are aspecting to them is very favorable to myself. Mm -hmm. um, so for me individually, it's a very fortuitous time and potentially for other people with the same North Node. Um, so that's uh, part of where that comes from. It would be helpful to know where your North Node is as well as uh, being familiar with your moon and your houses. Um, the sign that rules your second house, for example, is whenever the sun or the moon are in that sign is a good time to perform money magic. And you can likewise, likewise correspond magic um, meant to affect particular areas of your life to the signs that rule the house that pertains to those things. Um, Yes, I'm just trying to think of uh, anything else I would point out. There are other things, I'm sure, but those are just kind of some basic ideas. The North Node is important because it pertains to, uh, you can think of it as your destiny or the direction you're being encouraged to gr go for your personal growth. And it's typically the exact opposite of what feels natural to you. So uh, using 
magic and astrological influences to influence that is helpful. Um, Sandy, I have not read that book. The only astrology book you'll ever need. I have not read any astrology books. <laughs> that's not entirely true. You've got that blue brick that's sitting around here. Oh, I haven't read it, though. True. Mostly because it, it's a bit dated. But we, we talked about it the other day, but you actually learned about astrology from... Uh, uh, Coach Kyer Carter... He is on Facebook and YouTube, and he has his own website and astrology course. I've not taken the paid course, but I'm certain it's excellent and intend on doing so eventually. On YouTube, he has a free multi-part series called Astrology 101. Um, so Ray was asking, what if someone doesn't know what time they were born because of the you know, well, need for that. there are a few ways you can approach that. Um, if you see a good astrologer, they are supposed to be able to rectify your chart. That's what it's called, where they basically figure that out for you. The reason you need your birth time is so that they, you have the correct um, rising sign. And that's important because the rising sign rules your first house. And uh, you need to know the time of birth to know uh, what planets rule all of your houses, which is actually a very important information. It's kind of like the canvas that all the planets are on, you know, of the frame, if you will. So a good astrologist would be able to figure it out. They would ask you questions about uh, you, your life, or if they are intuitively inclined, they would also intuit your nature because there's a certain type of personality where it makes sense for the houses to be aligned a certain way. It can be a bit tricky because uh, sometimes, well, there are a few different factors. So, uh, Kyer Carter is experienced in doing that as I'm sure our other experienced astrologists. I can do it to a small degree because uh, I've had to do it for a few friends where they weren't sure, and um, so I had to make a decision, and later when they were able to obtain the information and I put it in, it turned out I was right. So it seems I have a fair ability to do that. Uh, oh, that's okay, Sandy. I honestly don't have a lot of time to study, and I haven't... I do have astrology books. I just use them as reference mostly. I mean, the I just haven't found a book yet that I've actually found very interesting to read. Uh, in fact, I wasn't really interested in astrology at all before uh, Astrology 101 by Kyer Carter. I really like the way he explains things. So. So honestly, I will probably invest the money eventually just to take the course. Because um, I think it would be well worth it. And I think... Uh, that's just me. But I thank you for the offer. Uh, what else? Right, so that is my magic tip for today. To study your birth chart. Uh, there are a lot of free calculators. Astro.com is pretty good. Um, I would just use the default settings. There's like a lot of different ways to have the chart drawn. Just keep it simple. Okay. Uh, I may possibly have time to check out that video in the comments later. I'm aware of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction coming up soon. Uh, let's see. Pamela says, I'm a Pisces with Pisces and Moon, Pisces and Sun, Scorpio. Well, let's see. Scorpio rising, so it would be Scorpio, Sagittarius. So assuming that Scorpio doesn't double up or you don't have that uh, your house is actually progressed sign by sign because that's not always the case uh, whenever the sun or moon is in Sagittarius Pamela that would be a good time for money magic for you 
just an ex as an example. So that's kind of it. You'll have to do the work yourself of having your chart calculated and studying the material. And it you'll probably have to you know study enough to not only understand your chart but also uh, read where the planets are currently kind of like the chart that I use every day like this uh, like this is where all the planets are currently today so also learning how to read this where all the planets are and what that means and then making the correlation of what that means for you it's I find that that is potentially extremely valuable information so that's the tip for today uh, yes Maria says thank you very much for the information I did send you the link to the chat party because I'm going to go see what packages just got delivered oh yay packages all right I do like getting things in the mail <laughs> Uh, I've Ray. Okay, so I'm on the chat party now. Ray asks, "I've narrowed it between midnight and 6 a.m. Would that be close enough?" I'm afraid not, because the ascendant sign changes every two hours. Two hours, so it actually changes over fairly frequently. Um. So yes. Um. If you want. I can just try to help you narrow that down um, a wee bit, um, just just to help. Uh, Ray also asks, how's the cat? Well, uh, I did announce on my page that we had to reschedule the vet appointment, so she's going on Friday now. That's why we were on time almost today. Uh, so on Friday, the morning report will be one hour later. So yes, also bear that in mind, the rising sign changes every two hours, so knowing your exact time of birth is pretty important. And being sure you have the correct time, so I would refer to your birth certificate and being aware of how the birth time is noted in your country or area of residence. In the United States, it is pretty reliable. Uh, because the time noted is when the baby actually exits the mother and like takes and like cries so uh, that is usually pretty solid okay. let's see Catherine says I'm literally on the cusp of Virgo Libra starts at midnight 8 47 p.m. Well, if it starts at, but it changes every two hours, so it would have to start. Well, anyway, uh, even if cusping, you will either be on one side of the line or the other, just because of the nature of the degree. So I would still read it the one way. All right. Um, so, we are going to be moving into our card reading for today. We're still waiting on all the exciting packages. Aww. <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to be getting my planner today, so I am, I am extra bummed out that it's not here yet. But we usually get packages later. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Sandy. That is him. Kyra Carter. Mm -hmm. Pretty good astrologist. Uh, also a life coach and insightful and a uh, man of strong views. I think he's delightful. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to be choosing a deck in a moment. And, um, I'm going to be doing a reading for all of you, giving you insight and guidance about the day ahead. Uh, Sandy, I, um, am getting one of the Law of Attraction planners that Lysander has. 
Yes. It'll be my first year getting one. Last year I was intimidated by it, but this year I'm looking forward to uh, having one of my own and doing all of the the work to get it set up and everything. So I'm very excited for that. Yes, yes. I I highly recommend the Bob Attraction Planner yeah. by Freedom Mastery. Uh, so I think we're going to use Psychic today. I feel like that's a good choice. <sighs> so today's reading comes to you from the Psychic Tarot Oracle deck. You may find that all of the reading resonates with you or just parts of it. hands down the most productive year in my life and it was largely because of the planner just like a you know a focusing tool last under you wasn't even entirely sure of what to do with his life up until mm -hmm. going through all of that and that's how the video started and that's what actually brings us here today that's how cool that planner is I kind of it is the reason that encouraged my psychic career. It is the reason <laughs> that we have come this far. Alrighty. So we have three cards. I for this deck I like to read the booklet description as well as offering my own guidance because that's like a whole like advising little thing rather than keywords. Let's see, I'm going to check your link real quick. Hmm. This looks like the right website. I was going to say, we should... But, Sandy, I have discount codes. I was about to say, we should just message you after the stream so that we can get you one of those codes. My super ultra discount code is only for my patrons, but if you look at my review video on my page, there's a 10% off discount. However, there are also tons of discount codes on the website itself. Oh well, yeah, Iris has one of these planners as well, so there, there's a group of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sandy did join our planner group, so yes, we have a group dedicated to planners. I figure I might as well address this now before I start reading about the cards. Also, thank you, Pamela. I like my cups, too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start finding some uh, some new so. new cups for you so that we can continue the party. So, um, if you look through the website, you can find like a 25% off thing, or if you become a patron on my Patreon, um, at least one dollar a month or more, then you can get access to a 50% off discount. But I'm holding that out only for my patrons as a special thank you. Um, Just another reason to become part of the tribe everywhere. So it is a $50 planner with shipping. Um, otherwise, um, if you want to save $10 and you don't care how the cover looks, you can order it from Amazon and save the $10 on shipping. Um, but there's only like two styles so i wanted a very particular style so i ordered from the website this year i'm trying to remember what the code was so 
I'm going to look it up real quick. It's like a... <laughs> I mean, if you go to the planner group, Sandy, the code is on the review video. Yeah. But usually if you scroll down on the individual listings, there's a 25% off code. Not all the time, just sometimes. They're tricky on that website. So, lower 10 off. Yeah, no Obviously, we believe in this, uh, this planner and their deal. Alright, so the code is in the comments. Oh, uh, so if what applies to Canadians, there's no astrological information in it. So if you mean like that, or the Probably. discount should apply across the board. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right ready to move into our, our card reading. Yeah. Sorry for uh, derailing us there. No, that's okay. I'm, I like this planner. So definitely let me know um, if you buy one and uh, look on my Facebook page, Lysander Xanthus Clairvoyant Psychic. I have a planner group. It's just a regular group. You can just join it. <laughs> Uh, also, thank you for joining Patreon. Please message me directly for the code. There's also a special Facebook group for patrons where that super discount code is shared. Yes. All right. Um, Sorry, just a moment. There's a lot going on. I don't mind, of course. I just hope that you guys don't mind. <laughs> For anyone who's new, welcome to, to the... It's not usually time. this busy or chaotic, I promise. It can be, though. Right, I'm not going to make you think that we're like hyper-organized. Well, we, we, get, we get a bit more all the time. Yep, I'm looking forward to doing a little review in our, our journaling book. And we do have a new patron. How exciting. Yes, thank you. So uh, uh, be sure to request to join the group and such. <laughs> we'll make sure that you have all the links and things that you need after the stream this morning. So welcome to the clan. Yeah, I'm glad to tell people about the planner. I definitely want you to tell me if uh, you sent it because maybe I'll contact them for, they're like, hey, I've like sold like 10 of your planner. <laughs> I know, uh, right? <laughs> maybe next year the website is difficult to navigate, but it's a great product, so <laughs> it's worth the trouble. So, yes, uh, it's an awesome planner. If you join Patreon, you get a 50% off discount. Ooh. That planner. Ooh. All right. Now, cards. Now cards. The card reading. The card reading of the day. So again, all of it may resonate with you or just some of it. The first card is hope. This is a card that focuses on the qualities of hope, faith, healing, aspiration, success, and finally enlightenment. When this card appears, know that a special wish you've made may be fulfilled in time. The hope card will help show you that it is that the impossible can indeed become the possible. The force that works through your soul, determining what's possible and the difference between success over failure and above all who we are, is the power of your belief. This card serves as a reminder to use your natural ability of intuition, the language of the soul, as you reach for your goals and desires. The future can be yours when you have hope and trust in everything you do. 
Soon others will be attracted and drawn to your inner light. Learn to share your experiences and lessons, or those around you will also realize that by having faith and pushing forward, where one may have felt no hope at all is the key to success. Above all, maintaining a positive attitude starting right now, this very minute, will allow your soul to soar. You'll discover an opportunity to shine as you reach for the stars. Very encouraging. The cards say you can do it if you believe. The card following it is triumphant success. Very encouraging today. The first of the mental cards signifies that new beginnings and exciting challenges may be before you. By utilizing your strength, willpower, determination, and focus, there's the potential for you to reign triumphant in many areas of your life. It's a new year. Get yourself set up to succeed. At, in traditional tarot, this card represents the Ace of Swords. And since a sword is a double, is double-edged, it can cut through all the barriers that hold you back if it's done constructively and with precision. Remember that there's another side to the blade. If you're rash or use it in a destructive way, it could be harmful to yourself and others. Always pause and think before you act. This card is a reminder to vanquish negative thoughts from your mind, strengthen and tap into your mental power, and use clarity with control in order to initiate new ways of thinking. So it's telling you to get your spirit and emotions on your side and to make sure that your mind is on your side and you're using it for your good and not letting your mind not using your mind against yourself it's a very difficult lesson. yes awareness this card is one of the key reminders that you already possess all of the tools to guide and direct you in your life. Whether it's wisdom, intuition, psychic skill, creativity, self-motivation, love, willpower, physical ability, or just pure courage, they're all part of you. Once you learn to tap into and use them, you'll be amazed by the power and effect they can have. You have the ability to allow the universe to work in partnership with you. Together you can manifest change, whatever the desire may be, and bring about a positive outcome. This card represents your ability to create your own reality, to set ideas into motion and watch them grow. This card is often drawn when you're ready to switch direction, start a new project, or change careers. Now is the time to use positive thoughts, visualizations, and affirmations as you veer away from negativity. Knowledge is power and can lead to success. By having faith, keeping your willpower strong and directed, and by tapping into the tools that you possess, as well as calling on the magic from the universe, you can accomplish anything and everything you set out to do. Strong words of encouragement today and reminders, important reminders. So this concludes the card reading for today. I definitely want us to remember and reflect on that. I am going to move into our book reading for the day in a moment. Uh, I do want to mention one last thing first, kind of a continuation of, well, it's really a separate magic tip of the day or reminder. For those of you who do practice magic, there is an eclipse on Friday the 10th. It is a full moon slash lunar eclipse in Cancer. And um, just as something to consider, there's no right or wrong in my eyes. Um, it is sometimes better to begin any rituals or spell work that you would like to utilize the eclipse energy a few days before so that it kind of eases in and rides into that energy rather than starting there. Um, 
and that continues for a few days afterward, um, the energy can be a bit interesting to work with. Um, if you're very experienced and understand the energy, it's no problem. I've never experienced any problems doing magic on that day, but uh, some people have, so I just thought it'd be worth mentioning that if you're concerned, or you're not sure how to use it, but want to start uh, maybe on Wednesday or Thursday and uh, continue the spell work through the weekend. Um, it is a great energy. It's like a, in my, the way I'm taking it is kind of like a, a gateway to your deeper emotions and dreams that you don't normally have access to. And it is an opportunity to connect more deeply to your path and self-determination to bring competing parts of yourself into balance. So those are just my thoughts. And every full moon and Friday is a good time for love and beauty magic. All right. So now it's time for the reading of the day, the other reading. I am full of gratitude today. I'm going to close the screen as well. Yay! Oh, great. <laughs> so today's reading comes from The Powers Within You by Louise Hay. We are starting a new chapter and has a very charming title. A world where it's safe to love each other. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. We all want to live in that world. Yes. Oh, M A. Uh, I love doing like a, uh, I mean, I just like taking baths, but I try to take ritual baths, especially on the full moon. Um, it is very replenishing, not just in terms of beauty and physical appearance uh, or glamour, if one prefers, um, but also uh, on other levels of one's being. I love a world where it's safe to love each other. We can either destroy the planet or we can heal it. Send some loving healing energy to the planet every day. What we do with our minds makes a difference. The planet is very much in a period of change and transition. We're going from an old world old order to a new order, and some people say it began with the Aquarian Age. At least the astrologers like to describe it that way. To me, astrology, numerology, palmistry, and all those methods of psychic phenomena are merely ways of describing life. They explain life to us slightly differently. So the astrologers say that we are moving out of the Piscean Age into the Aquarian Age. During the Piscean Age, we look to other people to save us. We looked for other people to do it for us. In the Aquarian age, which we are now entering, people are beginning to go within, acknowledging that they have the ability to save themselves. Isn't it wonderfully liberating to change what we don't like? Actually, I'm not so sure that the planet is changing as much as we are becoming more conscious and aware. Conditions that were brewing for a long time are coming to the surface such as family dysfunction, child abuse, and our endangered planet. As with everything else, we must first become aware in order to make changes, uh, not just within ourselves, but outward as well. In the same way that we do our mental house cleaning so we can change, we are doing the same thing with Mother Earth. We are beginning to see our Earth as a whole living, breathing organism, an entity, a being unto itself. It breathes, it has a heartbeat, it takes care of its children. It provides everything here that we could possibly need. It's totally balanced. If you spend a day in the forest or somewhere in nature, you can see how all the systems on the planet work perfectly. It's set up to live out its existence in absolute perfect equilibrium and harmony. You know, it is an interesting thing that I've thought about in the last year. 
is uh, my spiritual experience of our world uh, does reflect this. Um, it is part of our world's nature, literally and spiritually, to be so uh, grossly abundant uh, of all the millions of seeds of plants that are produced all the time, only a few ever sprout, but uh, even one plant produces so much fruit. Um, and so does each creature. Um, and every we, everything's kind of made so that we're inter interdependent on each other. No living thing is truly independent and relies on nothing else to continue its existence. Whether it's because of the need for literal sustenance or the need for love. Um, thank you for joining us, Maria. And uh, love is not just a feeling. Uh, I have found it to be an element like water and fire are and like spirit is. And love is truly the elemental basis of our world. And so love truly is in the earth and all the things that live on it are nurtured and fed by it. And you can reach down anytime and be nurtured by that love. And so uh, that's an important thing to realize, to not just know, but to really experience. But I'm gonna continue reading. So here we are, great mankind who knows so much, and we are doing our very best to destroy the planet by disrupting this balance and harmony. Our greed gets in the way to an enormous extent. We think we know best, and through ignorance and greed, we are destroying the living, breathing organism of which we are part. If we destroy the earth, where are we going to live? I know that when I talk to people about caring more for the planet, they become overwhelmed by the problems we are encountering now. It seems that just one person doing something will not affect anything in the entire scheme of things, but that is not so. If everyone did a little, it would wind up being a lot. You may not be able to see the effects right in front of you, but believe me, Mother Earth feels it collectively. And the Earth is very resilient, so uh, it will recover just fine with enough time as well. <laughs> Whether we will survive it is another thing entirely. It's always a funny thing to think about. Um, the other thing is... Um, uh, the more people become willing to invest uh, good into something they will not see the result of, I think more people will become willing. It's kind of some an interesting thing, part of the modern age in ancient times, uh, well not so ancient, even just a few hundred years ago, people would begin projects even, even uh, knowing that they would not see the end of it. Uh, it took a very long time for cathedrals, for example, to be built. So the man who designed it and the people who first began laying down the bricks to start the construction often did not live long enough to see the cathedral completed. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with other things, being willing to put in, invest in society and the world and the generations before us, even though we will not benefit ourselves. Um, really the thing I hope you'll take away from this is just feel, knowing and feeling that you are a part of a greater whole and that we're all together, even if some people don't realize it, and that it is a very good thing. I'm going to read ahead a little bit. This chapter she talks about a lot of things that I feel as though most of us do know at this point. Uh, this book is from like 20 years ago so uh, it was not so common knowledge at the time. So I don't feel like it's necessary to berate you all with how important it is to eat well and to uh, be uh, eco-friendly.
healing ourselves and our planet. Part of the catalyst for this transitional, transitional period is the crisis of AIDS. Uh, to give you an idea of when this book is from. Part of the AIDS crisis is showing how unloving and prejudiced we are towards each other. We treat people with AIDS with such little compassion. One of the things that I would really like to see happen on this planet, and I want to help create this, is a world where it is safe for us to love each other. When we were little, we wanted to be loved for who we were, even if we were too skinny or too fat, too ugly or too shy. We come to this planet to learn unconditional love, first to have it for ourselves, and then to give the same unconditional love to other people. We need to get rid of this idea of them and us. There is no them and us, there is only us. There are no groups that are expendable or less than. Every one of us has a list of those people over there. We can't really be spiritual as long as there is one person over there. Many of us grew up in families where prejudice was normal and natural. This group or that group was not good enough. In order to make ourselves feel better, we would put the other group down. However, as long as we are saying that someone else isn't good enough, what we're really reflecting is that we're not. Remember, we're all mirrors of each other. Of course, unconditional love, just like forgiveness, is a challenging thing. And I feel it's something that if one is dis to discover at all, it needs to be in your own time. So don't force yourselves. Find it for yourself first and extend it outward as you are able to stretch a little at a time. Stewardship indeed, an interesting concept. So, in the back of this book, there is a little, a few uh, exercises. Okay, I wasn't sure if uh, I would find something else I would like to share, or if I want to move into one of those. So, I will read this one last section here. For the highest good of all. You can take this time to apply your personal growth methods to the entire planet. If you just do things for the planet and not for yourself, then you're not in balance either. If you only work for yourself and stop there, then that's not balance either. You should start with yourself. Uh, you need your own love the most. And if you continue from there, that is up to you. Because I really, if each person took the time to heal themselves, that would be enough as well. Let's see how we can begin to balance ourselves and the environment. We know that our thoughts shape and create our lives. We don't always live the philosophy totally. Nonetheless, we've accepted the basic premise. If we want to change our immediate world, we must change our thinking. If we want to change the greater world around us, we need to change our thinking about it, not viewing it as them and us. If all the effort you put out in complaining about what's wrong with the world is applied to positive affirmations and visualizations of the world, you could begin to turn things around. As well as, you know, volunteering your time or getting involved physically. Remember, every time you use your mind, you're connecting to like-minded people. If you inflict judgment, criticism, and prejudice on others, you're connecting to all the other people who are doing the same. However, if you are meditating, visually, visually, <laughs> visualizing peace, Loving yourself and loving the planet, you are connecting with these kinds of people. You could be at, at home, bedridden, and still help to heal the planet by the way you use your mind, by practicing inner peace. I heard Robert Schiller of the United Nations once say, The human species needs to know that we deserve to have peace. How true those words are. All right, and this concludes the book. Uh, not counting the meditations for personal and planetary healing in the appendix. So good job, guys. We read through, well, most of the book. I did skip sections. So...
I think that is probably some good food for thought. So if you join, continue to join the Morning Metaphysical Report, instead of doing a reading, when I bring out this book, we will be going through the meditations for personal and planetary healing. Uh, there are a lot of them, so it'll probably be one at a time, and we may not do all of them. So uh, for probably the rest of the week, the reading segment will be more of a guided meditation segment. And there's some good stuff about all different kinds of things like working with your inner child or prosperity healing and so on. Alrighty, well, we are coming to the end of the morning metaphysical report. I would like to thank everyone for watching and participating today. But I do have a few things I would like to say before we go. I'm also reviewing the comments to see if I missed anything. Uh, Ray, sorry. I haven't checked for a while. Do you think baptism had a message in it to bath? I'm not sure that I understand the question. So you will have to rephrase that. Um, I guess just a side note about baptism is that it is, you know, powerful and has meaning and does have a spiritual effect. All right, so if you enjoyed this morning metaphysical report, please like, follow, and subscribe to my page or channel um, so you can continue seeing it each morning. Mm -hmm. It is usually at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Please remember that Friday, January 10th, we will be starting one hour later at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time because I have to take my cat to the vet. And that is the only appointment time that was available. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, content like this is possible due to support from viewers like yourself. If you would like to know how you can become more involved and support the report, please visit patreon.com slash freedom dream coaching. That link is in the description of the video and the tag is on screen. Um, you will also find on Patreon a poll about the Morning Metaphysical Report asking what segments you would like to see added or taken away. Uh, we would really appreciate your feedback. You'll also learn more about us and the report, the goals we're working towards, as well as our membership levels. The lowest membership level is $1 a month and goes up from there, and you receive rewards uh, in accordance with your level. And that includes becoming part of our private Facebook community. Yes, Rainbow Bridge, which is, we, which is for patrons only. Lots of good stuff there. There are a few, there's some uh, teaching materials. Uh, Eliza will be doing one free week of spiritual life coaching there sometime this month. There's mm -hmm. an event, this live event this Saturday on her page, Freedom Dream Coaching. Um, also, uh, you sometimes get treated to other things like product discounts. Not my products, just useful things like the Law of Attraction Planner that was brought up earlier. Yes, it is a reference to the Bifrost. Bifrost, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a fan, so yes, it is actually a reference to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? If you like and follow my Facebook page, you'll not only see the morning report, but you'll see all the other content I make, such as my reading, psychic reading videos. I sometimes do other things as well. Um, yes. I think 
that's all I have to say for the announcements today. I think so. Um, I guess the only other thing I want to bring up is that as a Patreon member, you get access to exclusive content, and there's like a ton of stuff there now. And for any patrons who are currently watching, I guess I'll take the moment to say that um, I'm going to be switching up the special patron content. So once, like a once a month or bi-monthly, uh, you guys will be treated to like a uh, private private healing session that you can watch. Uh, so that you're getting regular healing, or sometimes there'll be a meditation, and um, there will be personal update videos as well going forward. Um, we are always building and growing and improving on things. The Morning Report is going to get some additional segments sometime in the future with enough support, such as a Kitchen Witch segment, Cooking with Magical Intention, and a spiritual fitness segment bringing magic into your physical fitness. Oh mm -hmm. boy. <laughs> um, also, some of our Patreon goals is uh, improving tech. So once we hit our first pledge goal, we will be updating the sound and lighting equipment. Sound is our number one complaint. So uh, it will be solved and if you'd like to help us do that mm -hmm. uh, Patreon is a good way <laughs> alright uh, thank you again everyone for watching, participating listening mm -hmm. uh, We, uh, Maria we would love to have anyone join us uh, we definitely enthusiastically encourage you there's no obligation ever but we are very happy about people deciding to join us and being able to share things with our patrons already so I we should all get going on with the rest of our day mm -hmm. <laughs> so I all hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week I hope you'll continue to join me on the morning report and uh, join us on Patreon or Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. Uh, be blessed, everyone. Bye, everybody.